this morning you can see our pack is growing a little bit <clears throat> uh, one of the things I want to talk about today and Ben just got here uh, not too long ago um, we when he got here my, these are these are um, the dogs that we live with so this is Spry this is Taylor this is Ellie and then obviously Bella and one of the things I wanted to show today was um, these guys are with us, they live in our house, all four of them do. And I get a lot of questions about, um, I already have, I've got a puppy and I'm training it, but I have an older dog, should I work them together? Should I keep them separated? Just a lot of questions about when you have multiple dogs. So I think it's a good, those are good questions because you know a lot of people are faced with it. A lot of people own more than one dog. Um, now, I always tell people you don't, I'm not into training, letting older dogs train younger dogs because most of the time it's the bad habits that they learn. Um, very rarely am I seeing positive habits. Now I am, if you watch from the beginning, um, there was an episode I talked about cultural impacts <clears throat> and the importance of it. And one of, the, one of the stories I did on Instagram that got a lot of comments and a lot of messages back on was <clears throat> when Bella was probably about 16 weeks old, so it was a, way, a while back, uh, right when we first got her, we took him out and this is my routine in the morning. I let him out. Um, I go for a little walk with him. I kind of let him air out, let him get a little bit of energy off of sleeping all night. Um, and then we get into our day. And when we were out, most of the time these dogs are, they behave pretty well. Um, and all of a sudden one was wrestling with the other one and one's playing with the other one and they're running around and they're not really responding when I call them. I'm not looking for real formal heel work out of them at that point, but they're just not even responsive. And I realized this little Hellraiser was just tormenting everybody and she's running around and she's picking and she's biting and she's nipping at ears. And so I had just had enough of it. And I realized, man, that's my fault. I let this get escalate and now I've lost control. With three dogs that are two and a half years old, four years old, and six years old, that quickly, we had bad habits. Uh, we had bad behavior going, and I've worked really hard on them. So it's a, it's a example of how quickly things can go the wrong direction. So what I did was, I didn't get upset, I didn't get, uh, oh, I wasn't real happy, but I told everybody to sit. And my big dogs, I had to say it two, three times because I lost their focus. And I said, sit down. And I raised my tone, changed my tone. And when I changed my tone to a certain tone, you can see in her ears, she went, oh my gosh, I'm really sorry, what did we do? You're fine, you're fine. So I, when that tone changes, we get results. Um, that's why I like, that's why I don't put a ton of pressure on the dogs, because I like to keep it as soft as possible so that when I need something, it doesn't take much. So I changed my tone, they all sat, and it was real interesting, because I just stood there for a minute and I let them kind of regroup, and I looked over and here this little puppy was sitting as well. And so that's where the cultural impacts can be positive. Now, I want to show you this morning, because I had her out for a walk, I took her on a lead, which I a lot of times will. When I've got my other dogs, I just simply put a lead on. I've had that question quite a bit now. My puppy just runs, runs crazy when I'm with my other dogs. Well, just put it on a lead. Um, you, you take away the opportunity for failure that way. You, you really set them up for success. So I take them for a walk. I did that this morning. I noticed how sloppy her heel work was when I had my other dogs because I'm not asking these other dogs to heal when I'm out doing this. I, we've worked on that. You can go back and watch Live with Spry. There's 150 videos of us training her. We spent a lot of time on heel work, which is what we've been doing with, with Bella as well. Um, so I don't ask these guys to heal. I let these guys kind of get out and it's a distraction for her. And so today I was gonna show some of that. Um, I'm gonna show you, this is very much um, a real application of things that we do with the dogs, especially with her. Uh, when I have other dogs, and, and now I do let her run at times with them as well. Um, so there's a balance to it, but I'm, I'm gonna work the session today um, because this is building in distractions that she has to start to understand that these outside interferences don't supersede the idea of her behavior that we've been working on with heel work. So we're gonna work on our heels with our turns, we're gonna work on, and I'm gonna see, I'm gonna show you what potentially can happen um, when you change the environment and you change the scenario and you change the situation around you um, as far as how she's gonna 
be able to perform and focus and, and work her well, work herself through it. So in the meantime, I'm gonna put these dogs just on sit. I'm just gonna have them there. And I'm gonna just go into our routine. So it's gonna be a very similar routine to what you've seen us doing with heel work. We're just gonna do it with distractions down on this end. They're just gonna sit and watch. Um, so I need to spin this lead around. Bella, heel. I want you to pay attention to the, the loose lead. Now, when I was walking her earlier today, her loose lead was not very loose. It wasn't real good. Now, walking away from those dogs, we shouldn't have an issue, and we're not. Her turn is real nice. Here's where we're gonna maybe run into an issue. So I'm gonna turn away from her. It's her best, it's her simplest turn. Good. She doesn't even pay attention to him. That's perfect. Good. Come on. Caught her a little bit off guard, but she spun in real nice. Now, this time let's get just a touch closer. And, and I want to see her pay attention to them. Good. Very good. Now, one thing, too, that it's probably helping this scenario. So my, my, my thought when I started this was, I'm going to show you how she screws off with these other dogs. Because this morning she's been doing it. I've corrected her quite a few times on heel with these dogs. Now at that time, these dogs were in motion. So that adds another element to it. These guys culturally are putting off a pretty good show right now. Lay down, be good, behave. Uh, she's feeding off of that. She's kind of mimicking it. Heel. Now, let's walk her through it. Be prepared for her to reach out to one of these dogs. Very good. Very good. And she shows me up here. Good. Go lay down. So Taylor joins in on us. Sit down. Sit. Good. Bella, heel. Good. You can see her little body language pick up when she goes through there, but it doesn't change her behavior as far as her heel position. And that's what I need. Now, good. Good. This will be a little tempta tempting to her. Good, you can just see it. She wants to go down and pick that lead up. She probably would like to reach out to one of the dogs. You can see the dog's got good eyes on me, and so does she. Good. So this is something I'm looking to build on with her. We start this out all by ourselves. Just remote sit. Good. Good. So a little bit of group work for her this morning, and quite honestly, she's doing a real nice job. Good. Very nice. I'm gonna come in, grab her lead up. Good girl. Good Bella heel. Get her out of there. Don't push it too far. Now she was she did a really nice job with that. Now a little sit to the whistle. That's a problem that she's sit. That's something that she's decided she wants to do quite a bit of. Ah, ah, ah. So it's about time. Ah, ah, ah. The correction. So she doesn't do it. Good. Now, this time we put her out on an island a little bit. <clears throat> now she's all by herself and I've got these three over here. <clears throat> spry, spry, spry. Good, good, sit, good. Now I gotta be careful because if she were to break right now, what would I do? Ah, 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 ah. No, no. Good. Good. So I'm gonna call, call that a success and reset it. Good, heel.
good. Now we all know that hanging of that tab behind her, she's going to probably want to reach around and pull on it. Good. When she feels the weight, good. Taylor. Taylor, good. Taylor, here. Here. Good. Can you look at the body language on that little pup? <clears throat> Her ears are, sit. Her ears are pretty perked. She's tempted. Ben, why don't you swing slowly around behind her and, and aim towards me so you can see both the dogs when I do this next one. Ah, ah, ah. Ellie, Ellie here. Ellie. Stop. Sit. 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 Now, tough one. <clears throat> the two with the closest name. Now, I don't call her off sit. You guys know that. I do not. Ah, ah, ah. Sit. Sit. Good. Good. The two dogs with the closest name. Now she wants to come. I can see it. I can see it in her face. I can see it in her kind of hunched down. She's almost she's almost telling me I'm gonna scoot, Dad. And now she's borderline gonna lay down. Good. Good. So one of the things I do wanna work with her on is better remote sit. Extending the distance, extending the distractions, extending the time. Because one of the things we did this weekend was we had all ah, 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 ah. We had all the dogs up north with us, and I really struggled to be able to put her on a, I put the other dogs in remote sit and I did yard work for quite a while, and I just couldn't do it with her. So I wanna be able to start applying, having her with me, and having her be able to sit or lay down and not mess with stuff while we're working on something else. But that just takes, you know, that takes time to work towards that. So that's exactly what we're doing right here in this situation. It's very realistic with the other dogs. Good. Now this has gone probably long enough. Good girl. It's hard to, you can't hardly turn a, a session like that into a, le, a true lesson because it's hard to expect her to be able to work that long of a time. If I'm doing yard work, it, I might be doing it for 45 minutes. I can't expect her to sit still for 45 minutes. So what we ended up doing for quite a bit of it was we did short little breaks, short little sessions like this, and then I just put her in the kennel. Ah, 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 here, here, here. Sit, sit, Bella, heel. Good. 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 Heel. Her heel work is nowhere near as nice off lead, but we're getting there. Good. Instead of a instead of a bump with the lead, I use my fingers. Come on. Come on. Come on. Heel. Come on. Heel. Good. Good girl. Good, good. You can see that just as this goes on, it kind of erodes a little bit. There's a lot of freedom we just gave her. Heel. I mean, think about, think about how tempting that was. We just healed her off lead past those three dogs. Now, watch the difference when she's on lead. We gave her an opportunity there to, to do some things and she really chose to do the right thing. Good. Look how crisp her heel is when she's on lead, back to that old where we started. We walk right past these guys, 
That's a perfect chance to get a little correction. If we'd have been off lead there, we'd have lost control. Good girl. Sit. Good. Good. Ellie. Ellie. Now I say her name really quietly because her, her name sounds an awful lot like Bella's. Sit. Good. Good. In a scenario like this, I wouldn't make any retrieves. Heel. Because we're not going to get her into a habit of trying to feel competitive with another dog. Good. This is just working, in, working with the other group, the rest of the group, on things that we know. And we're getting pretty good at. And it's real practical. Good. To be able to go through a lot of distraction. Good. And our goal is we want to achieve some of the things that we were, have been struggling with. And some of those things are the idea of, you know, reeling her in and getting a good, solid remote sit in this group. And that's something that she needs to be able to do. <clears throat> because we do it quite often. There's a lot of times where I have my dogs in a group. We hunted this last weekend, and there were a lot of times where we just recalled everybody and had them sit down. We just kind of rethought about things, regrouped, settled back in. Ah, 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 no creeping. No creeping. See how she creeps just a little bit? Come on, come on. Don't let her flop. Sit. Put it right back in the spot. But we regroup and we just have everybody sit for a minute. And then we get back to the truck and we're talking about where we're gonna go next and we have everybody sit for a minute. And there's all these different times that we, we put dogs in a spot and we tell them just wait until we make a decision. Good. Ah. So this is just how we practice to get to that point. I can't quite do it with her yet. Um, but before I can do it, so before I can do it in the real world, we'll have to practice it. It's no different than any other thing we teach this pup. I can't expect her to heal through, um, come on, she's a puppy. Short attention span, sit, sit. I can't expect her to heal well in any type of real world scenario or situation until we practice it in a real controlled environment. Sit. And we get real good at it. And I can't expect her to go off lead until we practice it on lead. So I can't expect her to go into a group of dogs and sit in real situation when things are going on if we don't practice it in real controlled environments. So that's just what we're doing. Practicing it here and then we'll apply it later. But that's, all, that's just one simple thing that we're working on. And it's combining and, and it's just it take, it's just adding another layer on to a lot of the other skills that we've talked about to this point. We built in heel, we built in sit, we built in remote sit, steadiness, patience. Um, I didn't do any recall with her um, here, but we've been doing recall. Um, and she's really strong with it. The little bit of retrieving that we have done, um, she's done really well with. Uh, I haven't, we filmed some retrieving, what day is it? Wednesday, we did we film on, we did a little bit of retrieving on Monday. And she did it, and we did it in the afternoon, and for some reason she was really <clears throat> kind of lethargic in the afternoon. And she did a very nice job, and I think, I think she might have even picked the tennis ball up. Yesterday, the one retrieve that I did make with her in between yet, Monday and today was I took a big bumper and I threw it into some tall cover. Um, I was just out for a little walk checking food plots. I pitched it into the cover and I let her go hunt it out of that cover and bring it back to me and she did a real nice job with that. All the time <clears throat> we're really focusing on encouraging the hold and the delivery. We're not stealing it away from her. 
Um, we're not trying to catch her and grab it. Um, we're just really reinforcing the idea of her holding on to stuff. Sit. And it's just going to make, it's just going to build off of what she already does pretty naturally and that's delivers. Um, but it's going to make hold conditioning a lot easier. Um, so had a question, I had a question with the hunting of this weekend of, you know, how old are these dogs? Well, she's the youngest at two and a half. She's four, she's six. First time out really hunting Upland was for her. This is maybe the, I don't know, third or fourth time we've had Ellie and they're four years old and she hunted, I mean, they hunted tremendous. Um, now, do I want to wait till four with every dog? No, not at all. I prefer that two, two and a half. Um, you, I had a guy that you know messaged me about a six month old and what about bringing his six month old? And I said, boy, <clears throat> you've got a lot to risk and, and there's a lot to potentially go wrong. Um, first off at six months, I don't have them ready. Um, I don't know how you can. Um, now we're talking retrievers because I understand there's a difference in pointers. But uh, the idea with these retrievers, you just don't have them ready. And what have you got to gain versus what have you got to lose? I think you have a lot more to lose than you do to gain. So with her, when we hunted this weekend, she stayed in the kennel. Um, it was no different than me going to work. Um, she spends a lot of time in the crate. She'll spend a lot of time on place when I'm with her. But there's nothing, there's nothing for me to gain with her to take her. Now, the week, two weekends before, when we scouted, we went and walked a bunch of places looking for birds. I brought her with because there really was, there was going to be no shooting, there's going to be no retrieving. All we did was go for a walk in the woods. I'm all for that. I think that's great experience. That's great opportunity for them to build confidence and explore, um, smell new things, see new things. So I'm all for that. But to take a dog hunting this early just doesn't make sense. And you're going to run into issues and then you're going to get frustrated and then you're going to be in front of your buddies and you're going to go, oh, your dog's no good. And then you're going to get, it's, a, it's the start of a real downward spiral. So I, I caution you um, to not necessarily be in a hurry to get these dogs in the field. Be, be working. Don't, don't take the fall off. Work on stuff. Prepare them for it. Um, great opportunities. We did let her pick up a, a grouse, fresh killed bird. Um, and I brought it back to the cabin and I threw it for her and she picked it up and brought it back. No problem. I did it once and that was it. I just thought I'm gonna take advantage of this opportunity with this fresh killed bird. Um, normally in Spry we're gonna do a video on because she picked up a wounded one and she had a very heavy mouth. Um, so I'm gonna go back with her on cold game and start to soften. No, well, she didn't chomp. It wasn't hard mouthed. It was that bird was flapping, and I think that caught her by surprise. And she put a lot of pressure on. She didn't break the she didn't break the skin. Um, there's no damage done to it. But I'm going to work with her to get that get that delivery a little lighter. Um, so I'm going to soften that up that delivery. But I don't want to form a bad habit with this puppy either. So we did that live bird. She made a nice little delivery with it. That was it. Or fresh killed bird. So. That's it for today. I, I wanted to show you um, some, some ways that we're building in. Um, you know, we film our training sessions and we have been filming our training sessions pretty consistently. Those are formal things working with her. Now we did a formal thing working with her in the presence of other dogs. Um, and, and we'll start, slowly start to do that. Wouldn't have done this much younger than this. Um, right now she's, she's five and a half months, going to be six months pretty quick. Um, we're just now first starting to have other dogs when I'm actually working with her. Um, obviously she's been with other dogs, but we try to make, make the best of a control situation when that happens. So that's it for today. Uh, we'll put these guys back up and then we'll, we'll go on from there.